Hello, this is the video for homework number six, which is due Tuesday night, right before the test. And there are 10 questions. They are all about uh, chapter five, which has to do with circular motion. And here we go now. So this is homework number six. The first question, on number six did with uh, changing units what uh, we do in circular motion we measure angle angles in radians and I remind you that a full circle 360 degrees is 2 pi radians therefore uh, one radian is 360 divided by 2 pi and then you get the answer in degrees or the other way around if you have degrees uh, you need to transform into a radian so that will be uh, question number one on uh, question number two there is also this is now a problem of uh, having an object on the record player and the quantity of interest in circular motion is the angular velocity and the angular velocity is measured in radians per seconds so if you have one revolution is two pi radians so if you have a unit of one revolution per minute that means that you do two pi radians over one minute which is 60 seconds so this is how you transform one revolution per minute into uh, radians per second also connected it with the uh, Problem number two is how fast the object is going and thus the uh, linear velocity which is always tangent to the circle. That is of course the angular velocity times the radius of the circle of the distance that the object is to the center. This, when this is in radians per second and this quantity is in meters you immediately get this in meters per second. In problem number three, now when you are in circular motion, you are accelerating and you are accelerating in towards the center. The acceleration is always towards the center. As we have discussed at length, and that acceleration there are two ways to write it down. You write the acceleration, it's called the centripetal acceleration. So it's called centripetal. And this is for uniform circular motion. Is the linear velocity divided by the radius or because of this is the angular velocity squared times the radius. So in this particular case, uh, they give you uh, the value of the acceleration and they ask you how fast it's going and they also ask you what is the angular velocity of the insect in that particular problem. In problem number four, we go to the rotor. Now the rotor, we have it in discussed it in the lecture, is a little bit the opposite to uh, when you have an object on a rotating table. When you have an object in a rotating table, I remind you, and you look at it from the side, this is what you see. You see the object here, this is the distant r, and then you say that the free body diagram of the object is the normal force, the weight, and the frictional force that keeps it in circular motion and in this particular case the frictional force is 
uh, what gives rise to the centripetal acceleration and this other force balance and then you can certainly evaluate this by the fact that this is going to be this frictional force is connected to this normal force to, through the usual uh, relationship so this has been done in extens now the rotor is different in the rotor you are push against the wall so in the rotor the normal force from the wall is in this direction you want to go down because of your weight and therefore there has to be a force that balance this one so you don't go down and this now is the force that gives rise so these the roll gets reverse so in the rotor you have these and the static friction is equal to the weight and still you have this relationship that so from here is where you have now to go and uh, evaluate the minimum angular speed remember that you will need for the angular speed you will need to use this way of writing the centripetal acceleration we go to number five number five is the uh, this we did in lecture very very clearly we certainly did the case of when you have a bank curve and you have a car going in there and I'm not going to do it in detail here because it's done in the lecture notes of course the trick of this angle is that you, you use no friction to make the curve and if you don't use if you use no friction it means that the normal force remember this is the same angle than from there so this component of the normal force which is n sine theta is responsible for the centripetal acceler acceleration and I'm using here a frame that is like that and this component balance so from these two equations this was done in detail in class you get the relationship that allows you to evaluate the velocity um, or calculate the angle for a given velocity so you can calculate the angle for a given velocity 